Thank you for coming through to listen to my video. In this video, I'll be talking about Richard Fritz Simmons, The Harlem Plug. There was a book written by Harlem Holiday. Um, it's a very good book if you want to know more about Fritz. I know a lot of people ask questions about Fritz, but there wasn't much information about him. I first heard of Fritz uh, when I was speaking to A uh, one time, A.Z. Faison, uh, and he let me read the uh, original script for Paid in Full, in which he had Fritz in that script. But as the movie began to uh, be made, uh, they removed Fritz's character from the story. I guess maybe it would have been too long, so they had to remove a couple of people who were intricately involved in Harlem at that time uh, from the script. But I see lately there's been a lot of information coming out about Fritz, and that's a beautiful thing because I heard he was a great guy. And uh, I happened to speak to his family on Clubhouse one day. They were... Uh, guests in a room, I think it was a Trolls Nation or Dummy Nation, one of those two, and they were there and they were speaking on Fritz and I was able to tell them why Fritz wasn't included in that movie and I was very honored to be able to do so. Um, I felt in intrigued by his story and I felt like more people needed to know about Fritz. There's a couple of other uh, documentaries here on YouTube about him. But I wanted to do my own. So here we go. This story takes place in Harlem, New York City. Uh, let's say early mid 70s into the 90s, early 90s. Uh, as you all know, Harlem was known for what we were called the Willies, the big Willies. The fashion came out of Harlem. Um, most of the stuff that was uh, made popular in those times are still popular today. Rappers are still wearing Gucci, Fendi, um, a lot of stuff that came out of Harlem is still embedded within our culture. And Harlem was the home of the Renaissance. It was the first black neighborhood, a prominent black neighborhood in modern, you know, at that time, in the modern times that had mostly people who were upcoming business people, uh, street business people, and they thrived. One of the most popular that has been highlighted is uh, Bumpy Johnson, who was known as the Godfather of Harlem. There's a TV series also right now on Epics that's highlighting the story of Bumpy Johnson. Also, after Bumpy Johnson's reign was over, Nicky Bond stepped in and he had the reins for a while. But after Nicky Barnes, there was Richard Fritz Simmons, amongst others that were coming up under Fritz, who was our uh, AZ Faison, Alpo Martinez, um, Richard Porter, uh, Kevin Childs. Uh, there was a whole bunch of people coming out of Harlem that were uh, gaining a lot of riches from being in those streets. But today, the attention is going to be on Richard Fritz Simmons, who was born in um, Alabama and was eventually moved, his family moved over to the Carolinas and then Richard and a few of his siblings wound up migrating to New York City, in which case um, Fritz was here, you know, uh, making his way, you know, in Harlem, trying to find his, his, his niche. And he bumped into a woman named Cream B who he began to deal drugs with, and there uh, his, empire his empire began. She schooled him on a lot of things, and I guess also the older OGs that were around him taught him a lot, and that wasn't hard to come by in Harlem in those days. In those times, you had the older OGs. In order to be able to be a part of the streets, you had to be godfathered, and somebody had to usher you in and teach you 
And um, you basically had to be a protege before you branched out on your own. And eventually Fitz branched out on his own and he became huge. Um, His dealings and his methods of conducting himself on the streets uh, gained a lot of popularity and respect for him. And he eventually ran into some people that were able to give him kilos of cocaine on consignment. Those people were the Medellin cartel. The Medellin cartel, that was the biggest you could be um, in those times. Like you was directly dealing with the cartel, Pablo Escobar's cartel. Yes, that's who Rich uh, Richard Fritz Simmons was getting his kilos from, and that's who he was working with, and he had a great relationship with them. Eventually, he started to hire his own people. Um, he had Chucky, who was his bodyguard that wasn't really involved in the drugs too much. Um, Ace, who became a really trusted, good friend and partner of his. Uh, Big G, uh, and a couple of others, Dog Man, a couple of other people, in which case we'll be getting into in this video. It is said that during Fritz's reign, he was bringing in 500 kilos a month. He developed a really close relationship with the Medellin cartel because it was an incident where um, someone was trying to, like, people were trying to extort him and they were following his sister. One of his sisters, they were monitoring her and I, I guess they were planning cause, because at that time, there was a lot of kidnappings of family members of um, drug dealers, big drug dealers. And a lot of the, sh- the dudes that was on the street that wasn't making as much money or people had stopped working with them because they wasn't able to bring the money back like they should when they got anything on consignment. Um, they began to start just like trying to snatch people off the street and get money by kidnapping the family members of the big drug dealers. And someone was staking out his sister's home and his sister noticed it and she told Fritz and he came to his his sister's area with two members of the cartel with shotguns. The two members of the cartel had shotguns under their trench coats, you know, like the movies. And they let it be known, don't mess with his sister. And she never had that problem again. Uh, Fritz was also uh, shot um, during the time these people were trying to set him up and, and and control him, you know, on the streets. And what when he got shot, he had lost a large amount of blood and they had to give him a blood transfusion, which turned out to be a bad thing for him. Um, but during his reign, you know, he had to lay down the law. You know how it is on these streets. You know, you have to lay down the law and let people know what you'll be willing to do on these streets to to keep your territory. Uh, he had a couple of people on his team, but, uh, later on they turned out not to be as trustworthy as he may have thought. And around this time... Uh, Fritz began to get ill. Um, He was showing symptoms of being ill. He went in the hospital a couple of times, but he was doing okay for a little while. And during the midst of this uh, was when Rich Porter, I know all of you know the story about Rich. Um, His little brother Donnell was kidnapped and held for ransom, and they wanted $500,000. Now, Rich had met with a couple of people, high, you know, uh, big time drug dealers in Harlem at the time to try to get up the money, but none of them really had the product or the money to front to Rich, and Fritz didn't make that meeting that he had where he met a couple of people at the same time, but he was able to catch up with Fritz later on, and Fritz had given him advice to fall back you know, um, and see if he could find out information from the streets because people talk. Around that time also, you had the Preacher Crew and you had the Wild Cowboys. I know that um, the Wild Cowboys, the Wild Cowboys had their eye on Fritz, but the Preacher Crew had their eye on Rich. And as you all know, the Preacher Crew, along with Rich's uncle, kidnapped Rich's little brother, 
and Rich was trying to get up that ransom money so he could get his brother back. He finally got a chance to meet up with Fritz and Fritz gave him those 30 keys. Fritz did not ask him for money back for those 30 keys. He gave him 30 keys and he gave him, I think if I'm not mistaken, about $250,000 to add to the 30 keys so that he could get his brother back. Now being that Rich couldn't really make no moves because now the feds were on to him because of his little brother being kidnapped, um, he called Alpo to help him move the keys because remember, AZ had stepped out of the game after he got shot. So since 1987, 88, uh, AZ was no longer dealing with drugs and he didn't really have no connects either because AZ's connect had wound up being killed also, Lulu. So Rich went to Fritz and got the 30 keys and um, asked Alpo to help him and he wound up dead. Now when Rich died and Fritz found out Rich was gone, he was trying to find out what happened to those 30 keys. And uh, he was asking some of Rich's people, they were avoiding him, they didn't want to tell him nothing, but eventually they told him that Alpo had the keys. So he met up with Alpo about getting those keys back. Like I gave those to Rich to get my, to get his brother. I didn't give that to him for you to have it. And Alpo tells him, dead man can't pay no bills. Dead man can't pay no debts. Basically telling him that he wasn't going to give him the money for the 30 keys. So um, Rich let, uh, Fritz let that go because Fritz already, like I said earlier, he had access to 500 keys a month. So Fritz let him keep the keys. And um, he, I guess he said, I'll let Karma handle him. And Karma did handle him. He wound up getting shot, shot up. And then shortly after he got shot up, he lived. But that's when he was arrested and wind up, wound up telling on Wayne Perry and a lot of other people over there in D.C. While this was going on, Fritz was going through a lot of different changes. The streets was changing. Uh, one of his friends wound up being killed. His right, one of his right hand men, Chucky, wound up being killed with a, for with, no one knows why. I don't think they ever found out who did that. Ace wound up being set up with a murder case. Uh, and was accused of killing someone he didn't kill and was eventually sentenced to 22 years. So that the people that he could trust and knew how to move in the streets were gone. Those two was his closest friends and his best business partners. He was left with the underdogs, the ones that were under his two best friends, Chucky and Ace. And they weren't too street savvy. They wound up getting into a lot of stuff. Um, and a lot of things transpired that weakened his circle. Eventually, uh, Fritz got really ill and he was out there. He couldn't really operate. He was operating from home, but he was still bringing in money and people were still paying. But the people that he had helping him started to steal the money. And he had accumulated a lot of money that he was going to leave for his family in case something happened to him. And even people that was close to his family wound up stealing the money, buying property, um, doing all types of things. They just ravaged through Fritz's money when he was ill. Um, and, and also, he had bought a brownstone. Someone stole that from under him. He bought the browns, helped try to help Ace get a brownstone next door. They stole Ace's brownstone from under him. So there was a lot going on um, when Fritz was on his deathbed and when he was ill trying to recover. Eventually, the doctors told Fritz's family that there was nothing they could do for him, that his blood was poisoned, and there was no way for them to save him. People were spreading along out there on the streets that he had died of AIDS, but the family is saying it was not AIDS. His blood was poisoned somehow. It could have been the way that the hospital that had given him the transfusion was storing the blood that they gave, that they used to give him the transfusion. That can happen as well. But unfortunately, even though Fritz was such a fair guy and a strong presence in Harlem at that time, 
uh, he died a sad, tragic death. And they, the people that he trusted rummaged through his money. Um, eventually, those two people, one of them wound up going to jail and the other one was murdered. So there's never really too much of a happy ending in those in the streets. I didn't really want to go into too much detail in case you guys want to go get the book again. The book is called The Harlem Plug, the Richard Fritz Simmons story. And it's written by Harlem Holiday. You can get it on Amazon. I think it's $11.99 on Amazon or less. Very good read. And a very interesting story. Salute to Fritz Simmons. Salute to him. And also, let's clear up this rumor that's been going around for years that Alpo killed Rich over the fact that he was stealing from him. 